Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio with Science Buddies, and in this video, I will show you how to build an ion wind rotor. In addition to access to a Van de Graaff generator, you will need the following simple supplies. A ruler, scissors, fine tip marker, electrical tape, pencil eraser, two nails, one slightly larger than the other, and a piece of either aluminum foil or foil cut from an aluminum can. The foil from the can will work better because it's more rigid, but the aluminum foil is easier to cut. Start by cutting out your rotor. Use the ruler and marker to draw your rotor on the sheet of foil. The exact size and shape of your rotor isn't critical as long as it's symmetric. It should be long and skinny, with two points on the ends facing opposite directions. You will also need to carefully mark the exact center of your rotor to punch a hole. Once you've drawn the outline, use scissors to carefully cut your rotor out. You'll also need to round off the back edges of your rotor blades. We'll explain why later. Next, use the larger nail to punch a hole directly in the center of the rotor. If you find this difficult, especially if you're using aluminum from a can, it may help to use a scrap piece of cardboard as a backing. Place the rotor on top of the cardboard, then press down firmly with the nail and it should punch through. After poking through, flip the rotor over and use the head of the nail to flatten any burrs or rough edges because these can get caught and prevent the rotor from spinning. After that, place the rotor on the smaller nail and see if it can spin without getting stuck. If it gets stuck, you might need to use the larger nail to widen the hole slightly. Repeat this process until it can spin freely on the smaller nail. Next, take two small pieces of electrical tape. Punch the small nail through the center of one piece with the sticky side of the tape facing towards the head of the nail. Slide the tape all the way down against the head. Wrap the second piece around the nail several times, flush with the head. To attach the rotor, tape the nail directly to the top of the Van de Graaff generator. Press down firmly to make sure the nail is in electrical contact with the dome. Slide the rotor onto the nail, then press the pencil eraser onto the top of the nail. This will prevent the rotor from flying off, and is easily removable if you want to swap in a different rotor later. Double check that the rotor can spin freely without getting stuck. If it doesn't, you may need to widen the hole, or flatten any sharp edges. Now, switch your Van de Graaff generator on, and as you can see here in slow motion, your rotor should spin. But how does it work? Your Van de Graaff generator generates electrostatic charge. This causes positive charges to accumulate on your rotor since it's in electrical contact with the dome of the generator. However, those charges aren't evenly distributed. They tend to cluster near sharp corners like the tips of your rotor blades. This concentration of positive charge strips negatively charged electrons from nearby air molecules, turning them into ions with a net positive charge. The now positively charged ions are repelled from the positively charged tip of the rotor. According to Newton's third law of motion, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction, so this means the ions also push back on the rotor. Since the rotor has another tip pointing the opposite direction on the other side, the combined forces from these ions, or the ion wind, cause the rotor to spin. Now it might make more sense why we had to get rid of those sharp corners on the back of the rotor blade earlier, because they would have caused a force in the wrong direction. Now, as mentioned earlier, and as you can see here, this also works with aluminum foil. Since the aluminum foil is much lighter, the repulsive forces between the positive charges on the aluminum foil and on the dome of the Van de Graaff generator are sufficient to push it upward against the eraser, which is why you need that eraser there to stop your rotor from flying off. In this slow motion video, you can also see what happens if your rotor isn't perfectly symmetric with a perfectly centered hole. For written instructions to make your own ion wind rotor, check out the link in the description below this video. For thousands of other fun hands-on science and engineering projects, visit us online at www.sciencebuddies.org.